Hi my loves, welcome back to Lavender. For a while, my life has felt messy and I've left a lot of areas neglected and untended to. I purposely took the past month really slow so I could do all the little things to get my life together like clean and organize my stuff. To be honest, I still feel like I'm in the middle of this process, but I'm making a little progress week after week to refresh my life. Before we start, make sure you're subscribed to this channel for more videos on personal growth and lifestyle design. Okay, so first step, cleaning. As much as I'd like to be, I'm not the type of person who stays clean and organized all the time. The pressure to clean everything can feel like a daunting task, so instead, I just tell myself to pick the area that needs it the most. Today, I'm tackling my makeup desk, which has felt very chaotic and out of control for a while. There's just so much on this desk that I figured the best course of action is just to take everything off first. Not only am I cleaning today, but I'm also planning to declutter a lot of my makeup because there's so much here that either I don't use or is expired. I have an overwhelming amount of makeup because I get gifted a lot of PR packages. I'm not complaining because I'm grateful for that aspect of my job, but at the same time, I always have to be mindful of what to keep, what to give away, and how many new items I can really fit into my space. I do feel like cleaning and decluttering is not just a physical act, but an energetic one. You're shaking up the energy of your space and inviting new energy to come in. Next step is organizing similar items together so I can be clear about what I have in every category. I'm also planning to reorganize my storage system, so this is the starting point for that. Afterward, I'm going through each item and deciding whether it's something I can let go of, whether it's expired or just isn't serving me anymore. This isn't always easy since there are old things that I love that I really need to throw away and new things that I don't really love but feel bad about throwing away. I don't feel great about giving away used makeup as well, so donating isn't really an option here. To be honest, there were some things that were kind of hard to part with because they were my favorites for so many years, but at the same time, I'm telling myself I have no space for anything new. I need to literally go out with the old so that there's space for the new energy and the new things in my life to come in. Plus these are literally expired. I've just, I like to overuse makeup. <laughs> just wondering, how often do you discard your makeup? Do you stick to their expiration dates? Comment down below, I'm curious. Now it's time to reorganize the makeup that I am keeping. So I'm using this opportunity to redo the whole system. It's another day and now I'm just cleaning all my makeup brushes, another task that I often neglect. The silicone pad that I stick in the sink is honestly a game changer since I can clean multiple brushes at once. It makes this process pretty quick and easy. And there we have it, freshly cleaned brushes. Another new day and it's the new moon, aka the lunar new year. I decided to sign up for a new moon breathwork and hypnotherapy event by my friend Lior Alexandra to ring in the new year with self-care, healing, and raising my vibration. All of these practices help you refresh your life, so I'll share what we did here. We started off with meditation and intention setting. By the way, this is my favorite notebook design that we're launching in our shop this spring. It says, you are exactly where you're meant to be. And this is what I wrote for my intention for the new year. We did some stretching and some yoga. And then Lior led us to dance freely for a couple songs. She was so cute, everyone was vibing in the chat, and dancing is truly a practice that lifts your mood and vibration. If you ever feel stuck, I recommend you try putting on some good music and dancing it out. Shake all that old stuck energy off of you and feel lighter, more joyful, more free. Then she led us through a 30 minute breathwork session. Breathwork is a powerful practice that helps you tap into your subconscious, heal from deep emotional wounds, and gain intuitive insights through a specific type of breathing. During breathwork, Lior was leading us to kick and punch and vocalize to move any stagnant energy in our bodies. Moving and screaming during breathwork is totally normal. If you guys are curious about breathwork, I'll link a few resources down below. 
After breathwork, we did a hypnotherapy session. Hypnotherapy is a relaxing practice where you just lay comfortably and allow your subconscious to be guided by the speaker. Your mind enters a trance-like state somewhere between consciousness and sleep, where your subconscious is more open to suggestions for positive change. I'm getting ready by going into a legs up the wall pose. This pose isn't required for hypnotherapy, I just wanted to try it. It's funny because I started the hypnotherapy session in this pose and then I ended it in this pose. Somewhere in the middle, I just wanted to relax my body and cocoon myself in my blanket. The experience was super relaxing and insightful, so I took some time to journal my thoughts and lessons afterward. I wrote about the memories and insights that came to me regarding my childhood and the environment I grew up in. I wrote about some things I wanted to say or give to my inner child to be able to live more as her true self. That was a really nice session to start my Lunar New Year with. It was the new moon ceremony, but it's also Lunar New Year. I have my fruit bowl here, and I'm not even sure where to start, but I guess I'll start with if you guys have not tried breath work before, I highly recommend it. Definitely watch a YouTube video, like get in a safe space, have some blankets around you because it can be an intense experience. Um, my first time doing breath work was in Bali, so it was like the shamanic breathwork workshop. I did two of them that were 90 minutes long each and that was really intense but it kind of opened my eyes to the ability that our body has to heal just through breathing, right? Like people talk about psychedelics and mushrooms and this and that but you really can activate Thing, like those experiences through simply changing the way you breathe and getting yourself in the right environment. So yeah, today certain things came up. For example, I became more aware that I hold maybe some childhood trauma in my hips. And so I was just like, moving my hips throughout breath work, kind of releasing the energy because I do believe we hold stagnant emotions, energy, and trauma in our bodies. I've talked about this before, but there are so many things you can do to release that energy, but I do believe that movement helps release that stagnant energy within. I did cry a bit during today's session. It was good to tap into kind of like my old memories, kind of visualize my child self. It helped that yesterday I went over to like see my cousins and my nieces and nephews, my aunts and uncles, like the huge family for Chinese New Year. And seeing like my nieces and nephews that are literally like babies to maybe like six or seven years old, it that visual kind of reminded me, wow, like I was once that age in this same house growing up and there were a lot of memories there, both good and bad, some trauma, and just a lot of things that happened there in that house. And I think it kind of, it, it brought something back for me. It helped me go back to that place and start to kind of reflect on that experience being brought up there with all my cousins running around and forgive the people I need to forgive, let go of any anything that I need to let go of. So there is so much like, pleasure in releasing, I want to say. Like, it just feels good to let go. And I've been healing for the past few years now. And like, for example, when I first started doing breath work, the first three or four times, like I would get like intense uh, physical experiences. I would clamp up, my mouth would clamp up. I would cry a lot. It would be really intense. Today, it didn't feel as intense. And I really feel like I'm at a place where I've healed the main things, right? And now I'm reaching into like the little nooks and crannies and I'm cleaning the little corners that might be dusty <laughs> in my body. Like the, I feel like the big things are, Oh, very relieved now because I've done so much work. Obviously, there's endless work to be done, but yeah, I do feel like I'm at a place where we're doing the little things now. We're going back to, oh, I forgot about that little memory or that little memory. In general, some big themes were telling myself and my inner child that it is safe to be yourself. You don't have to try to be anyone else. You don't have to kind of shrink down and shy away from things or dim your light in any way. It is safe to be your authentic self. It is safe to speak your truth. 
I was the type of the kid that kept everything to myself. I wouldn't express my emotions or feelings or thoughts. And even if I tried to, I felt like no one understood me. And I was really, like, I really was shrinking myself down. Or maybe I was born that way, I'm not sure. <laughs> but, you know, it's okay to allow yourself to be yourself. I think a lot of that fear comes from wanting to be accepted, wanting to be long, wanting to be loved. And we all crave acceptance, love, and belonging. It's natural. And so I think a lot of us do have childhood traumas around that, whether you, it was in your family or in school or both. And in our healing journey, I think a lot of it is coming back to ourselves to learn to give ourselves that love, that acceptance, that approval from within without needing that external validation and just learning to trust yourself, learning to be confident in yourself and your worth and recognizing that you already are and you already have been this entire time been a beautiful and complete soul. A couple days later, I went into the salon for a major chop. I've been wanting to refresh my look for a while. I felt weighed down by long hair and wanted to chop off all of that old energy that lingered in my hair since 2020. <laughs> And here's the final result. Through this refresh, I'm inviting new energy and positive change into my life. And I feel more ready for it now that I've let go of the old, old stuff, old energy, old hair, and more. I've taken time to nourish myself and my space and be intentional about how I want to move forward in life. I hope this video gave some ideas on what you can do to refresh your life. It all begins with an intention and a little action in the areas that feel stagnant or neglected. So, what part of your life needs a major refresh? Let me know down below. Sending you all so much love and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!